27,000 Americans will be diagnosed with oral cancer this year alone. But if detected early, the five-year survival rate is actually 80%, which is a wonderful statistic when you think about that. And here to talk about the causes, the risk factors, the symptoms, and of course the treatment of oral cancer is our good friend, Dr. Martin Goebel of Southern Boulevard Dental Center. Great to have you as always, Dr. Goebel. Good morning, Nikki. We're so happy you're here to touch on this very important subject. And as I mentioned, it's a huge number of people getting oral cancer in just a year alone. But the fact that in, in you know, a survival rate of 80%, if you detect it soon enough, is really quite significant, isn't it? It's very significant. The fact is, is that oral cancer isn't detected uh, soon. Mm. It tends to be t detected when it has already metastasized or spread. Right. And that's why the survival rate is, is at 50% or less if it's, if it's metastasized. Well, before we go any further, what is oral cancer? For those who have missed it when we've talked about it before, I want them to understand what it really is. Oral cancer is a change in the tissues of either the mouth, mm -hmm. they include the throat, and the nose. Right. When, it, when we speak oral cancer. Uh, it's a change in the tissues that becomes cancerous. Mm -hmm. And the survival rate, as you said, is 80% if we detect it early. Right. Uh, the causes of oral cancer, any type of chronic irritation to the tissues. Mm -hmm. That includes tobacco, both smoking and uh, chew, that includes alcohol and just recent I think just last week uh, Johnson & Johnson had a thing with um, their breast biopsies yes and the fact that they didn't want to deliver these anymore well I uh, mean I, I think it's important that and we'll go back to that in a moment but I think it's important that you can see on the screen right now these risk factors because I think you just mentioned tobacco alcohol alcohol-based mouthwash this is a very significant thing and with the study that you're talking about Johnson & Johnson came out with you said that you've known this ever since you were in dental school that you realized that this could be problematic when using a product like Listerine where there's such a high alcohol content so talk a little more about that because I want people to really understand well when you expose soft tissues to alcohol mm -hmm. It causes changes. Mm -hmm. It starts with the dysplasia, and the longer you're exposed to it, the worse it is. Uh, alcoholic patients, uh, those that are alcoholics, sure. tend to have seven times more oral cancer wow. than non-alcoholics. Now, there are other risk factors with them. Mm -hmm. They're, they usually have poor nutrition. They usually have poor hygiene. There's right. a bunch of stuff that goes into play. Right. But other studies have shown that alcohol, exposing laboratory animals to alcohol on soft tissues causes dysplasia and which can lead to cancer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting that you said to me before, I don't know, I mean, you want to fight gingivitis, but does that mean you want to get oral cancer as a result of it? No. Well, there are other, there are other mouthwashes and that's going to be in another segment. Exactly. We're going we'll to actually give that. people some yeah. really good insight on that. Now, what I want to talk about is the detection of oral cancer, because we're talking about the risk factors, but we also need to know how we can detect it so we can prevent ourselves from, you know, from making it worse. So let's talk a little bit about the detection. There are a number of exams that we do. Mm -hmm. We do um, a screening exam yes. that involves palpation or feeling yes. for lumps and bumps. In fact, I think we have some video of that we can yes, show we everybody. Do. Because I, want, I was there, I was a witness to this exam and I will tell you it was painless. Watching her, she said there was no pain, it was not difficult, it was very simple. So let's talk about what we're seeing. This is what you just referred to. Yeah, we're looking for lumps and bumps mm -hmm. in the lymph nodes, in the tissues themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my associate, Dr. Anton, and we do a white light exam. In other yes. words, just normal light. Right. We look at things, we uh, look for any type of uh, abnormalities, anything sure. that's, that's out, of the, out of the normal. Um, with what Dr. Anton's using now is the Velscope, yes, powered what by is Sapphire. That? The Velscope screen. I thought this was very interesting. I want to let our viewers understand it. It is a blue light that causes the tissues to fluoresce. Mm -hmm. when, the, when soft tissues are exposed to this blue light, they emit an apple green appearance mm -hmm. if they're normal. 
Right. If there's anything out of out of normal, yes. it tends to show up dark or black. In fact, we can even show you exactly what that looks like. Because what I thought was so interesting is he's looking through the blue light. I'm seeing a blue light. But what you're actually seeing in what you're looking at is that green light. Is that green for fluorescence. Yes. Okay. So tell me what, what, how we know that that is cancerous versus the healthy bill, you know, the bill of health that she had, which was good and clean. Well, the the right side is the white light view, mm -hmm. and the left side is is the other uh, the the Velscope view. Right. Um, that last shot there yes. actually shows that that lesion has spread, and you can see the little dots around it, from the from the center thing. Is it the black that shows the black you? Okay. That, the black means that there's been a there's been a change. Okay. Velscope can't diagnose cancer. It can't tell you that you have it. Okay. It can tell you that there's a change in the tissues. And so it's something the to only look way for. that you you can verify that mm -hmm. is by a biopsy. Okay. 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 When we find something like that, and it's small, mm -hmm. it gets it gets biopsied. Right. And if it comes back cancer, then we can initiate treatment. Okay. But this is the first easy step to at least detecting if you need that biopsy right. in the first place. The discovering it early phase. Exactly. And that's, that's what, what we, we said to. is so important is the discovering it early. And patients that are susceptible to cancer, mm -hmm. and that, when I say susceptible, I mean genetically. Right. There are those that just as in smokers you can have smokers that smoke a hundred years and they don't get lung cancer they don't have the genetic makeup for cancer exactly unfortunately there are a lot of patients in the United States or a lot of people in the United States that have the genetic makeup and the only way that you're going to prevent the cancers is to eliminate the risks right absolutely well good information and good to bring the awareness of the risks as well as the way to find out if you are even a candidate for the possibility of this and I think it's wonderful that you're bringing the awareness and letting people know what they need to look for as always very informative very helpful and most importantly let's tell our viewers how they can find you take it away dr. Goble we're at Southern Boulevard <laughs> Dental Center that's at 2716 Southern Boulevard Southeast in Rio Rancho Visit our website at www.sbdental.com. And for more information on oral cancer, you can visit uh, the Oral Cancer Foundation at www.oralcancerfoundation.org. Org. Fabulous. Thank you. Well said. And I have to tell you, it's a great office. I love it in there. It really wonderful staff. So if you have any needs uh, for your, uh, whether it be to detect oral cancer or just your general dental needs, go to see Dr. Goble. He's fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate it. And Hallie, I have a little question for you. I don't know if you're a gardener or not, but are your flower and shrubs wilting? Mine might be. Even if you think you're doing everything right, your soil may be sabotaging your efforts. Horticulturist Cheryl Kent is next with tips to make your garden grow.